Well, I was born in Gympie on Station Road on the 11th of June, 1934. My father was working on the first 4G wide tower then, when I was a little fella. Then, in about, when I was five, he got in the forestry at Imble. He used to ride a push bike back and forwards every weekend, every week, and uh, he got a house in Imble when I was about just nearly eight. So we rented a house there for a few years, yeah. We made a lot of our own fun because there's a lot of farms there. We used to go on the farms at weekend and, you know, and the big hay sheds and all that sort of stuff. And used to make our own fun, really. Well, right. Over in the Inmill Island, where we first rented that house, there was one, two, three, four, four dairy, five dairy farms. Now there's none, just on that island, yeah. Imbal Island, yeah. when you go across the Abbot Creek now and turn right to go to Imbal, yeah. you go straight ahead yeah. and you cross that bridge, then you go about two or three k's and cross the other bridge. Yeah. See, <coughs> pardon me, years ago, that used to flow a lot more around, I used to call that the Anna Branch, yeah. used to flow around there a lot more, but yeah. where the falls was near uh, Imbal Station, just below there, yeah. there was rocks there and they blew them went lower, see, so the water now goes straight to it. It doesn't go around like it used to so much anymore. Yeah. That's why they still call that the falls, yeah. The upper creek comes down so far down here before you get the falls, and the under branch goes around like that. Yeah. It goes right round in a real big circle yeah. and comes back in there again. Yeah. And you cross one bridge here yeah. and the other bridge down further okay. on the way out towards Brisbane sort of thing, yeah. After I was 11, of course, I went to Brulu in the meantime for about 12 months and back then. Dad got a forestry house. Then uh, when I was 11, that's when I started work on Charlie Stubbins' dairy farm, yeah. I started work then. I used to ride a horse to school, come home with milk and all that sort of stuff. And I drove the first Ferguson tractor demonstrated in the Mary Valley at Charlie Stubbins' farm on, on the island, yeah. He bought one later on, but the demo one, yeah. That was the first one in the valley, too modern. I was going along one day and you brake pedal is in, the exhaust is underneath it. So I'm going along, next time I smell something burning. What's that? It's the sole of my foot. You yeah, didn't wear shoes those days, your feet was like that, yeah. Where that high school is now, when I left the island with Charlie Stubbins work when I was 15, I lived there, there's a house there. I went in the timber then when I was 15, yeah. That's where I stayed, yeah. Just a house there, and old Julius Harvick and had the little place next door, and all that back behind there was all market garden. Yeah right back over to the school, who had it, Julius Arkinson. Oh, Jimmy used to live just over the line, the little tin shed down past that hall there. Christy Silver married one of the daughters, yeah. Oh, Jimmy R. Tim was a bit light fingered. And over Bobby Young had the corn over the island growing. And you could hear Jimmy in the corn picking the corn, pinching the corn. He'd say, hey, Jimmy, save some tomorrow night, will you? That's all he used to say for me. I was there until I was 15. And when I was 15, I went cutting and hauling timber then. Bill Bennett, I used to drive for him, yeah. No, no, cutting, cutting trees down and carting, driving the timber trucks, yeah. But I tell you what, those days everybody worked too, you know. In timber now, they've got lifts and cranes and yeah. we done everything by hand. Mm. Saw and everything by hand, yeah. yeah. They used to fall scrub out here when they, before they put the plantation down, they'd pull all the scrub by hand and burn it, yeah. yeah. All by hand, yeah. Father had come out the asylum, he went to work on a farm. The farmer said, you know, you chop that tree down. He said, chopped it down. He said, now chop it up. He said, he's silly than I am. <laughs> chopped it down, we didn't know how to chop it back up. It's just for a short time, yeah. Not really. No. Old Tom Bath was a cool teacher there. But I left school at 13. But so now I just learnt. I can survey, do everything now on contracts, all that sort of stuff, just learn practical, you know. And there's a lot of droving those days too, like my grandfather's a drover. And the, all the forestry would be all leased out to cattle people in the forestry. And you'd only have one one dipping yard was on the way in to Imbal up here, only one yard. You'd have to take all your cattle out there and that's what he done all the time, yeah. When I went to Timber, there was two bullock teams, Trimalima, was in the plantation pine, he had six bullocks. 
and Aidy Bartholomew was in the, all the big timber, and he had about 18, I think he used to stick with 18. That's the last two bullock teams I can think of. Used to have the two leaders at the front, that's why that bullocks at the front used to be the leaders, I knew. At Jim Muhrenberg's mill, it's between the showground and the railway line down the back there. He was the first one to use a plantation pine. When they cut plantation pine, he had a case mill there. Matter of fact, my other brother worked there for a while, yeah, in the case mill. But eventually, Hine and Son and Lutton, they built the big mills, you know, and that was it then. He closed down, yeah. Jack Lutton, just up the road further, past the police station, he had a sawmill there, Jack Lutton and Son. And every Christmas time, the people put their name down and every child got a present and a pack of lollies. The whole, whole town of Inwood, not just the, his workers, everybody got one. The Bosier Leaf, we used to go out of Croy, even I went to when I was about nine. We used to go out and help Dad pick it. At weekends, they'd pick all this Debosia leaf out towards Croy and bring it back that shed near the railway line and they'd dry it all out and send it away and make some sort of a drug out of it. But it's a pity all the pineapples are gone and all that. In the, the, up, the railway yard up further past where the old station was, they used to load all ply timber there. Yeah. yeah. They used to have a horse on the other side with a frame around the logs and the horse used to pull the logs up on the train and come back and pull the next one. Yeah. Pull the ploy logs up on the train, yeah. So Case yeah. mill oh. way down further down. Oh, the Bozier was in that oh, shed, yeah. That shed. Yeah. Okay. The mill's down to your left, mill's down 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 down. past the hotel. Ah. Down near the scout's den, down that way. Yeah. I don't know if the scout's den's still there, is it? I don't know. It's a pity the rattler not coming right out this far, isn't it? See the Royal Motor Driver. What was his name now? Mills? Oh, that's right. Jim Mills. He used to bring the rail motor out to Brewerloo and stay with people there the night. When he got to Brewerloo, he had to go down, cool and give and start the pump, yeah. to pump the water up, to fill up for the trains. That was his job, had to do that. The next morning, he'd bring the Rattler back. That's what we used to call the rail motor, but the Rattler yeah. later on, yeah. There used to be three trains a day, go out from Imble. Mm -hmm. We're sawing timber and yeah. pineapples and all that, yeah. You had to throw them seven high in the carriage too. In case of pineapples, used to make your muscles stick out a bit. There used to be a lot of pineapples in those days here, all the way through, yeah. Val's father finished up after he sold the shop. He was uh, rep for the COD, at COD in Brisbane. He used to go down and estimate the crops of the, for the pineapples. But I didn't have much to do with that sort of thing. I was in the timber mainly. Oh, you never had to buy them, not here. No. I was driving a timber truck. I was a dirty old timber truck driver then. And the... Bowls Club having the debutante ball up here. So I come to said, I've got this girl from Nambour wants a partner. She did, no, I'm not going to partner. No way, I don't even know and all this sort of thing. Anyway, they talked me into it. In 62 years, we're still together. You wouldn't believe it. That's how it happened. Yeah. Debutante ball, yeah. Because I wasn't a real good boy. I was pretty wild. Actually, my version's a little bit different. What's that? <laughs> well, when, when my father bought the shop here, I did not even know where Imbolc was. I had never heard of the place. And I was working in a hospital in Amble at the time, and on the odd occasions I'd come home for days off. Mum said to me once, there's a dead ball here. And I said, so? And the next time I came home, she said, they are looking for girls to take part in the dead ball. And I said, well, don't look at me. I don't know anyone here. And I'm too old. Anyway, my mother was like a dog with a bone. Every time I came home after that, she nagged and nagged. And in the end, I said, oh, for God's sake, if it's going to find me a partner and I'll do it. And there it is. There's Keith. He was the partner. She <laughs> nagged and nagged. And the first time I ever saw Keith, he's standing there chewing, obviously. I've been told what to do ever since <laughs> about our battles in life like everybody else. When I got married in 1959, Val's parents had the shop in Imble. Then they wanted me to work, so I started in the shop, which it wasn't for me, but I did. And when they got the Rumba Dam shop, wanted me in charge of that, so I went up there and I was a postmaster as well as the shop up there, yeah, running that for, what's this, about 18 months, I think. Then there wasn't indoor for me, so I went out and worked construction then, yeah. And the school was straight across the road them days, yeah. When I first come here, Gilroy's had that shop. And uh, 
It was run by the Gilroys. And I'd, quite a few after that before your father bought it, I think. He bought off Halstead, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. And eventually it burnt down in about 1966 or something, didn't it? Or four. Oh, I'm not sure, but Dad had sold it by then. Well and truly, yeah, and then it, it burnt down. But it's an old down. country store. It had store on this side and a drapery on that side and all that sort of thing, yeah. Drapery and the, news agency, uh, hardware. It was a big shop. And living quarters at the back, yeah. residence was at the back, yeah. And I went for timber truck driver to a counter jumper. And Keith, Keith started working at the shop. Then we moved when, um, when Barumba started. We, we went up the there, yeah. Lots of stories up there then. Yeah. yeah, Val, my wife, she was a nursing sister. She'd done a lot of nurse. I was, I was the ambulance driver too. For the 18 months, I used to drive the ambulance, yeah. And uh, then when I left the shop, Oh, I used to bring the paymaster in to collect the money or take all the big bosses to Brisbane. I had a cushy job there for a while, yeah. That sort of thing, yeah. yeah. Then when that finished, I went to Adelaide with the same company. Seven till I was... 1966 I left there and went north. Yeah. 1966, yeah. yeah. I, did, oh, I used to do all the postal work, yeah. And a fella called Michael Bissotti, he got electrocuted up there to do yeah. He's leaning on a machine and... The steel tracks that went through him and uh, Val went up too to see him there, just purple he was, he just cooked. So I had to sort all these money out for overseas and all that sort of thing, yeah. Just the one building, it was yeah. a bank and they had the outside phone, you had to control it, all the calls and all that sort of That's thing, yeah. And Melbourne Cup Day, I should be in jail, shouldn't I? Clary King was a SP bookie in the camp and the ladies come with their money and their name and all that on over the post office counter and I'd give it to Clary. Wouldn't do it now, would you?